so what's gonna be the next thing? Uh, I need to find my to-dos. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I can do a canvas. Right. So the, the point of canvas is to be able to do sub canvases. Right. So right now, uh, the canvas is just a pointer of pixels and width and height. Right. And the way you get the pixel, right, so if you have X and Y, uh, you essentially take Y, multiply by the size of the row, which is width, and you offset that row by X. Right. You offset that row by X. Uh, imagine that you have some sort of a canvas, right? So imagine that you have some sort of canvas. Let's actually say that it's going to be 10, and uh, this is the canvas, right? So in that case, you have the point, uh, the pixel, uh, pixels, which points at this corner, right? It points at this corner. Uh, then you have things like width, right? You have things like width, uh, which is, okay, so here is the 10, and then height is going to be 6 in our case. Right, there we go. So this is the description of, um, you know, this canvas. Now imagine that what if I want to treat as a canvas like this specific region in the middle, right? So what if I want to be able to have sub canvases? How can I do that? Right, if I take a pointer, right, so I can actually even like denote uh, this thing with that, right? So this is the sub canvas that I want to have. So if I point pixels at here, and just set width and height to 3 by 3, it is not going to work. It is not going to work because uh, you can take first, um, first row, then you will try to take the next row, and you will actually take this thing. Right? So it's not going to be correct. So you can't easily take sort of like a sub canvas of this canvas without copying that data. And once you copy it, it's not going to be applied to the original canvas. And that could be actually useful for all sorts of trick. So, and the idea that I want you to do, I want you to introduce the notion of the canvas as the structure. And the thing I want you to add along with the width and height is so-called stride. Stride is basically how much, how many pixels you have to skip to get to the next line, right? So in case of the full canvas, so the width is 10, you have to skip 10, um, 10 pixels to get to the next line, right? So when you take the sub canvas, you change width and height, but you keep the stride of the original thing. So now here's the first row to get to the next row, you have to add 10. Right, so you add this thing and you wrap around and this is the next line and then the next line. So as you can see, I just add additional stride and I'm automatically able to take sub canvases and do more interesting tricks uh, with the rendering and stuff like that. For, for instance, I can maybe simulate some uh, rectangular stencil, right? So I have the original canvas. I just do a little bit of like, like a stencil or maybe in OpenGL it's called scissors, right? So I can do scissors and I take sub canvas, render something in there, everything outside is going to be cut off and then I can continue rendering into the main canvas. Or, or furthermore, maybe I want to parallelize the rendering. So in that case, I, I take bigger canvas and I split it into like four sub canvases and I run the rendering in, in four cores. So that would be also interesting as well. So like being able to take these sub canvases enables a lot of interesting tricks, but that requires passing uh, additional parameters. So now canvas is four parameters, right? So now we have to put stride in here, which actually puts too much noise onto the parameters. And that's a good sign that maybe the time has come to separate that into its own structure, right? Right, so it's going to be its own structure, pixels, pixels, uh, width, eh, width, height, stride. Right. So, and instead of expect, uh, accepting this huge amount of parameters, we can do Olivet's canvas, see, 
There we go. So, and we just have to like migrate all of the functions to uh, to the canvas, right? So that's going to be the plan. So this is the next feature that I want to implement. Sounds interesting. Sounds cool. By the way, you know, if you implement these sub canvas features, you can actually implement fill rect in terms of sub canvases because if you need to um, if you need to fill a rectangle you can actually basically take the sub canvas for that rectangle and fill the whole canvas and you kind of like fill in the rectangle actually <laughs> right so you can basically reframe the task of filling the rectangle right so you always can implement it in terms of filling the whole canvas uh, you just like take a small sub canvas i think it's rather interesting <clears throat> all right uh, so let's actually go back uh, i want to bring back those parameters right i just want to check i just want to check that this entire thing compiles all right just want to check that this entire thing compiles and we probably need to uh, have some sort of a function that constructs the original canvas right so let's create a leave it's make canvas canvas right which should accept these parameters and i think since it creates the original canvas it should set this right to the width automatically right mm, so this is going to be like that and let's do its canvas so this is going to be the canvas uh maybe i'm going to call it oc right so pixels pixels uh, this is width this is height and stride is going to be width Boom. OC. so this is how we construct the original canvas so and then i want to be able to take the sub canvas right uh, then I want to be able to take the sub canvas, uh, leave it sub canvas. And here I'm going to accept the original canvas and I want to accept the rectangle, the sort of like a sub rectangle for, for, for the sub canvas, right? We're going to accept X, Y, width and height. And I'm going to accept integers, meaning that they can be negative, right? And we're going to handle all of their negativeness. Uh, so, and I have a very cool function in, he function in here that I use throughout the code base. So it's a, uh, a leave it's normalized rect. It accepts the x, y, w, h of the rectangle and it accepts width and height of the canvas and returns you a normalized version of that rectangle as two points. Right. So essentially uh, x1... Oh, fuck. Maybe that's fine actually. Do I use this shit correctly? I just realized that. Oh yeah, I, I use it correctly. Okay, so I just I was a little bit worried that maybe I use it correctly. So, okay, so essentially the first point is the left top cor uh, top corner, and the second point is the right bottom corner, right? And what's interesting is that it is always like that. So x one y one is the left top corner and x2 y2 is the bottom right corner no matter what are the signs of these things it will normalize them not only that it will actually clump them to the borders of the size of the canvas so you can always iterate uh the things like that from x1 to x2 from y1 to y2 and just directly uh, um, access the pixels without worrying that you're gonna go out of bounds Right. So this function also checks out of bounds things for you beforehand, and you can always safely iterate through these ranges. If the values of these things are so that the rectangle is going to be completely invisible, maybe it's completely outside of these the sizes, it will return false. Right. So first thing you sort of like uh, try to normalize it. If it's completely invisible, you can actually skip handling that thing. Right. So, and this is the thing that we can actually use for taking a sub canvas. Right. Um, so, but then we'll have to decide what if you have a canvas and you try to have a, a sub canvas for the rectangle that is completely outside of the canvas? What do you do? 
We can actually return maybe null canvas, the canvas with the zero width and height, right? We can even maybe define such thing as a constant, right? So define, I believe it's canvas null, right? And we can just like return, uh, I believe it's canvas zero. Right, so this is a null canvas. And what's interesting is that since it's width and height is zero, if you try to render anything there, you won't be able to do that because like it's, it's zero, right? All of the for loops are not gonna uh, you know, execute ever. All right, so that's basically the function that we have in here, which is rather convenient function, right? It can just like normalize things. So let's try to call that, right? We already have x, y, w, and h. Now we need to get those things, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm thinking is that maybe, just maybe, I'm going to put it like that. Right, so now I'm passing the original rectangle here. So here we have a rather interesting thing. So we have to provide the width and height of the canvas. So we do it like that. And here we have to pass those things by pointers. There we go. So if this thing uh, fails, right, we should return null canvas, uh, canvas null. So this is going to be null canvas. There we go. So if this thing uh, normalized correctly, now we have to construct a new canvas out of that. All right. So this thing points at the top left corner, right? So that means we have to do OC. Uh, pixels, oh, uh, basically y1 multiplied by stride, this time I already explained why, and then plus x. So this is the new pixels, oc pixels. So width is x2 minus x1 plus 1, right? And height is y2 y1 and the stride has to stay the same right it has to stay the same and then we return this uh, the sub canvas there we go so we implemented sub canvas isn't it cool it's pretty cool so let's actually try to compile that and see if it's if it's gonna do anything all right mm. So I'm going to do build, do this h, and uh, normalize. Okay, so this thing is defined below, so we probably have to bring it up. Uh, welcome to C, I suppose, right? So let's actually put it in here. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And it compiles. It's pretty cool.